Welcome to McKee Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a first person character controller using C. And we're going to be doing this by creating functions that will be triggered using input components. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. My project is just a blank C++ project, so you don't need to import anything or worry about having specific items. To go ahead and begin, we're going to go up to our edit, go down to project settings, and then we're going to scroll down to our input, and we're going to create axis mappings. And you want to make sure that you're doing axes and not the action mappings. The action mappings are more for pressing and releasing, whereas the axis mappings are for moving and rotating as we're going to be doing. So we'll go ahead and create these. We'll go ahead and do our first one, which will be horizontal. And the input for this will be D and A. We want our D to be a scale of 1, as this will be going in the right direction, which is positive. And then for our A, we'll put that scale in a negative 1, as we'll be going to the left, and that's in the negative direction. For those who don't know exactly what the scale is, it's simply a multiplier to the value that the input returns. We're only using a positive one and a negative one, so that way we can tell our system to go left or right, but you could put any number you wanted here. If you wanted your player to go slower, you could put negative 0.5 or positive 0.5, or if you wanted it to be faster, you could put a 10, for instance. Now that we have our horizontal, we'll go ahead and create a vertical, and this will be in the W which will be a positive, and then also the S, which will be a negative. And this will take us forward and backward along the X axis. And then we're gonna create two more mappings, and these will be for our rotation. So the first one will just be our horizontal rotation, and this will be the X mouse. And then our next one will be our vertical rotation, and this will be mouse Y. And both of these scales will be a one. Now we can go ahead and close out of our project settings. We can go ahead and create our C++ class. It's going to be a character. And I'm gonna just name it my FP character. And then we'll go ahead and create the class. So the first thing we need to do is add a couple including. So I'll go ahead and go up here. And we're going to add our first including, which is going to be for our input components. So we're just going to put components, input component, and then our second one will be for our camera, as we're going to create the camera inside the script. So we're going to go ahead and do the including for that. And this is camera, camera components. And that's all the includings that we need to add. So we can go ahead and scroll down and we'll go ahead and create our functions. So we're going to have four different functions, one for our horizontal movement, one for our vertical movement, one for our horizontal rotation, and one for our vertical rotation. So we'll go ahead and start with our horizontal movement. And you want to make sure that you have a parameter of float value. This is what's given from the input. And then we'll do the same with our vertical. And then for our rotations, we'll just simply change the move to ROT. And then do the same for our vertical. And now we want to add a property. This is going to be our camera. And I'm going to give it an edit anywhere and a category of camera. And I'm simply doing this so I can show you that you can edit the properties inside the details panel in the editor. But if you only want to manipulate the camera throughout your script, you don't need the edit anywhere or the category. And you can simply just have a plain U property. And the U property type is going to be a U camera component. And I'm just going to call it cam. And that's the entirety of our header. So we can go ahead and go over and open up our CPP. And the first thing we want to do in here is add to our constructor. And the first thing that we want to add to it is going to be a possess player. So we're going to go ahead and type in auto possess player. 
and we're going to make this equal to E auto input. And then we're going to put player zero. The next line of code is going to allow us to rotate in the yaw direction. So I'm going to go ahead and type in B use controller rotation yaw. And I'm going to put false here. For whatever reason, roll and pitch are already defaulted to false, but yaw is defaulted to true. And in order to be able to rotate it, we need it to be false. So that's what we're doing here. The final thing we'll be doing inside our constructor is creating and setting up our camera. So we're going to go ahead and do cam equals create default sub object. And then the object that we want here is a U camera component. And then we'll go ahead and do text. And we'll just call this camera. And then we want our camera to be attached to our root component. So we're going to do cam attach to root component. And what this does is put our camera at the center of our player and have the camera move with the player. And then finally, I'm going to add a line of code that's completely optional, but I'm going to change the position of my camera because when you attach it to the root component, it sets the camera in the exact middle. And I want my camera to be slightly higher at what I would consider an eye level. So I'm going to go ahead and do set location, give it an F vector, which will be a zero in the X and Y, and then a 40 in the Z. The 40 is just a personal preference. The way I decided on the 40 was by going into the detail panel and messing with these values until I found a position that I liked. Once we go back to the editor, I'll show you where in the detail panel you can go to figure this out for your game if you don't feel like 40 fits well for you. So next what we want to do is go down to our inputs and we want to go ahead and add those. There will be one input component for each function, so we'll go ahead and do our horizontal movement. So we're going to do input component bind axes. And then the first parameter is going to be the name that we put inside our project settings. And then the second parameter is the object that we want it to be affected, which is this object. And then finally, it's the function that we want to bind to it. So we're going to go ahead and do my FP character. And then we'll do our horizontal movement function. And then we're going to do the same thing for our vertical movement. So we're going to do input component, bind axes, vert, this, and then again, a my FP character, vert move. And then we also want to do the same thing for our rotation. I'm simply just going to copy and paste this. And then I'm going to make sure that I add a ROT to the end of my input names, as well as changing the move to an ROT in my function names. Now the last thing I have to do is create my functions. We'll go ahead and scroll down and start creating the functions. So we're going to go ahead and do void a my FP character. And then we'll start with our horizontal move with the float value. And then inside this, we want to say if we've received a value from the input, add movement. And our horizontal move is our left and right movement. So we want to get the actor vector that's to the right. And then to that vector, we want to add the value. And all this is saying is if I've received a value from my input component, go ahead and add that value to the right vector of my actor. And the reason we have the if value check is so that way it doesn't constantly call on the add movement input when we have no value to add to it. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for our vertical. Once again, I'm going to copy and paste because it's almost the same. We're just going to change this to vert. And then we want to make sure that we change our actor vector to forward. And now we can move on to our rotations. So I'm going to go ahead and do another void a my FP character. And this time I'm going to do my horizontal rotation. Once again, we'll have the if value. But inside it, instead of adding movement, obviously, we want to change our rotation. So we're going to do add actor local rotation. We're going to give it a F rotator. 
which will have a zero in the pitch, a value in the yaw, and a zero in the roll. The last thing we have to do is our vertical rotation. This one's going to be slightly more complex because I want it to have a range. In the three previous functions, we adjusted the actor's rotation or location, but in this function, we'll be changing the camera's rotation. I'm gonna go ahead and do void a my FP character. And this one is our vertical rotation. This one will still have the if value, but then inside this one, we're gonna have if statements so we can check if we're in the range. So the way we're gonna do that is by creating a float that we'll just call temp. And we're gonna get our camera's current rotation. And we wanna make sure that we're getting the pitch as that's our vertical rotation for the camera. And then we're going to add the value to this. Now what we're gonna do is take this temp value to see if we're inside our range. So we're gonna do if temp is less than 65 because that's gonna be the top of my range and temp is greater than negative 65 because that will be the bottom of my range. And we can go ahead and take our camera and add rotation to it. Again, we'll give it another F rotator. This time though, we're gonna put the value in the pitch a zero in the yaw and a zero in the roll. So again, what we're doing here is going ahead and getting the value of the rotation that would take place if we added the input's value to our current pitch. And then we're making sure it's inside our two different caps, which I've selected as 65 and negative 65. And then if it's inside this range, we go ahead and add the rotation to the pitch. So now we can go back to the scene and go ahead and compile. Let's go ahead and check why it failed. I accidentally put an extra R inside category, so we'll just go back and fix that real quick. Save again and compile. And once this is done compiling, I'll go ahead and show you the detail panel where you can manipulate the camera manually. So now we'll go ahead and drag in our controller. And then again, over here in your detail panel, you can type in camera so you can find the category easier. And as you can see, this is the cam that we created. And these are all the details that you can manipulate since it's edit anywhere in the U properties. And so in order to change the transform, I'm just gonna close these up so we can get to it quicker. As you can see here, you can adjust it. It's the 40 that I have it, but you can put it wherever you would like it to be, either manually or in code. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that change and go ahead and click play. And then I'm clicking S and going backward, W and going forward, D to go right, A to go left. And then if I move my mouse left and right, you can see that it moves my camera left and right. And then if I move it up and down, you can see it moves it up and down. And as you can see, it caps it, so I can't go higher than that and I can't go lower than that. So as a recap, we used input components to tell the system to add a value in a specific direction so that way our user can move and rotate an object in the scene. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join our Discord. The link for that will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.